Hello everybody, and uh, today's video, uh, usually I try to sell you guys on why you should watch a Dota Diary video before we get into it, but I'm not going to beat around the bush and say that this is going to get kind of heavy, um, as this is something that's meant a lot to me in my life, and something that I've been sorting through recently, and I'm here to share with you guys to hopefully help people that they're not alone, and maybe... Just maybe, even if there's just one of you out there that needed to hear this or hear somebody talk about it, uh, that would fulfill the purpose of this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and see where it goes. So if you're still with me, if I've at least sparked your curiosity enough to continue watching, then I'm going to lay it on you that this video is going to be talking about stress and anxiety and depression um, being used as an example from my own life. So I think it's an important disclaimer that this is, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist, I'm somebody that spent a lot of time thinking about this, but I have learned from people that have higher education in psychology, but um, this is a lot of my own thoughts, none of this is medical advice, but hopefully things that I can leave you with, at least, you know, to be pensive about, and uh, see where it takes you. So recently, um, I had a discussion with somebody that prompted me to when I was trying to explain my perspective on it, I had to, I realized similar to like when somebody asked me a question in Dota, it's something where it's like, you know, but you've never had to explain it to anybody and you don't know exactly why you know. So it's like when somebody asks me a question in Dota, suddenly I have to understand very clearly why I made that decision, why I'm telling them what I'm telling them in order to hopefully help them understand. So somebody asked me a question um, or they made a statement that I was responding to that made me realize that I had to differentiate between stress and anxiety. So like since then, I, you know, I've gone and Googled stress and anxiety. You know, I pull up Google here just for the sake of this video and I see like, how can I tell if I'm stressed? You know, it's like irritable, angry, impatient, overburdened. Um, it's like, what's the difference between stress and anxiety? You know, it says stress is the body's reaction to a threat, whereas anxiety is the body's reaction to stress. And I'm reading all of these things. It's like stress can be a common trigger for anxiety. You know, what is anxiety? Uh, and I'll be honest, like, I read this stuff. And if it's anything like you guys, I'm not trying to shit on, like, definitions from the internet. It didn't fucking help me at all. It's like, okay, you're telling me that's what it is. But, like, what? You know, that doesn't fucking do anything for me. So when I realized I had to explain the difference between stress and anxiety, I first looked up the dictionary definition of anxiety. So let's just pull that up real quick, right? So... The dictionary definition of anxiety was a feeling or worry, a nervousness or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. So like in my head, I was like, anxiety is worrying about things. That was like what I was thinking. But, you know, that gave me a nicer understanding of like what I was thinking about anxiety. So stress is a response to something specific. Like I have a really hard test coming up. That stresses me out. I'm working 60 hours a week. That stresses me out. This is something I have to do, stresses me out. But anxiety is worrying about the uncertain. You know, maybe a stressor triggers it potentially, but it's worrying about all the potential outcomes. So a perfect example is stress is the response to the fact that you have a test that week. Anxiety is what if I fail this test? Will I get kicked out of school? Will my parents no longer love me? Will people think I'm stupid? Anxiety is... Basically, the, when you say, like, imagine the worst case scenario, right? Let's just picture the worst case scenario, and that's what anxiety is. And what it made me realize is how often when I'm anxious that people treat me like I'm stressed. So what, uh, what I mean following this example is that if you are stressed... The best thing you can do to de-stress over the long, over like over to get rid of this stress is to address the stressor. It's like, oh, I should study for that test, right? I should organize a schedule. I should plan to st study X amount of hours and, you know, do it. But if I'm worried about my parents no longer loving me because I'm not saying they did that because I'm going to fail this test and somebody tells me here, let's set up a schedule for you to study. Like, you know, you're going to, you just need to ace it or like whatever. It's like, no, that practical advice doesn't help. It doesn't do anything um, for you because you're addressing the stressor, but not the feeling of anxiety and the worry that they have. And so my own experience with anxiety, I will give my 
story in a bit. I've been a very anxious person my entire life. Uh, not my entire life, at least my last 10 years. I don't want to speak for my teenage self. And a lot of anxiety, like I said, is worrying about things that haven't even happened yet. Potential outcomes that are going to be a disaster, quote unquote. And anxiety, this is the result that I've noticed, is that anxiety makes you so afraid of the problem or the potential of the problem that you don't even want to look at it. That by simply acknowledging its existence, that's just like the worst imaginable thing ever. And that's why anxiety is such a huge part of depression, because if you're getting where I'm going with this, if you're anxious and you're worried about the outcome and just thinking about the test that has all these potential outcomes, the last thing you want to do is think about that test. So what do you do? You do nothing. You end up sitting in your room all day and doing absolutely nothing. So before I go any further about anxiety and stress, I think it's important that I give you my story because I don't want to say it like gives me credit, but it, you know, hopefully you can, some of you resonate with me or maybe you know somebody that is experiencing this currently and you can see the parallels between what I'm about to say and their lives or your life. So when I was in college, I, my sophomore year, I suffered from pretty severe depression. What basically happened was my entire high school and my entire freshman year of college, I was getting straight A's. One could say I was like a perfectionist um, and I held myself to a really high standard. I'd always had a pretty good amount of pressure on me and I also put a lot of pressure on myself. So in sophomore year, I started having a few classes that were very difficult for me and I ended up getting B's and C's in the first quarter um, of the year. And, you know, and like in hindsight, it's like, that's not that big of a deal. Everybody messes up or whatever. But what ended up happening was, you know, I started losing confidence in myself and I started worrying about like, what if there's another class that I'm not going to do well in? What if me trying super hard is not good enough? You know, what if people no longer think I'm smart because I'm not doing well in these classes? These are the type of thoughts that went through my head. So what ended up happening was my response slowly but surely was to not go to class. Why? Because Thinking about class triggered all of those anxious thoughts. So over time, between like the end of the first quarter and in my school, there were three quarters, you know, not including summer quarter. That's why there's four. During second and third quarter, it became progressively worse um, where I didn't want to go to class. And the part about sh anxiety that really ties in here is you're also ashamed because whenever you talk about this out loud, like even now, it's like, I feel kind of dumb, right? Like, why would I worry about all this shit? Why don't I just do it? Just go to class, get A's, work hard. So there comes in this like shame component where you're having all these negative thoughts. You can't even face them. You don't want to face them. You don't go to class and suddenly you become ashamed of yourself. Not suddenly, but like, you know, overnight, over the course of many small instances, you become ashamed of yourself. You wake up one day and you're like, you just think you're a pile of garbage. That's what I thought of myself, to be honest. So that shame then becomes associated with the thing that stressed you out in the first place that led to this anxiety. So this was class. So I became ashamed of even showing myself in class to the point where eventually I hit like a 10% or like 0% attendance rate. And, you know, surprise, shocker, if I go to class as zero, except for tests, I was getting a D or an F in most of my classes. So then I become so ashamed of myself as a person, not just for my grades, not just for class, but as a person that I don't want anybody to see me. So then I started staying in my room all day. Like this was towards, you know, the third quarter is when this started happening. So I started staying in my room. I didn't leave my room. And then I noticed that the only times I left my room were to get food and to take out the trash. Those were the only reasons I had to leave the room. So I started, you know, ordering pizza at like 9, 10 p.m. Um, when nobody else is likely out. And I would show myself for the least amount of time. And then there was a day where there was one week where I didn't take out the trash. And then the next week I had two big bags of garbage in my room, right? And then there's the shame component that, okay, I've got these two big bags of garbage. People don't see me coming out very often. And they see me come out of my room with two big bags of garbage. That's embarrassing. That, like, what if people see me with these two big bags of garbage? What if they just think, like, I'm a really dirty person? What if, what if, you know, what, all these what ifs. That's what anxiety does, is just the what ifs. So what did I do? Similar to classes, as I became slowly and more and more ashamed of 
going to class, I became more and more ashamed of what it looks like if I take the trash out. So what was the result? Had probably a four by foot, four foot by four foot cube of trash in the corner of my room. It's like almost embarrassing to say it, right? It's like, holy crap, you know, that was me at one point. But I have learned to talk to myself in a nicer tone. So this is not a story that I, I share easily. Like I said, it is kind of embarrassing, but at the same time, I, I've come to terms with it. That's, it's something I did. It, it just is what it is. And, you know, eventually one day you just say to yourself, this is not okay. This is not enough. Like, this is, who the fuck am I, you know, that's doing this? Who is this person that I see when I look in the mirror? But that's not, the whole process out of it is not what I'm here to talk to you about necessarily as everybody finds their own way. But what I'm here to talk about is what I wish somebody told me or did for me back then. Um, and by no means is this going to work for everybody, but I've thought long and hard about all the underlying issues that I have back then. And I imagine if I was in a conversation with myself right now, that version of myself, well, what I want to talk about. And the first thing is reassurance, right? If you haven't got it already, that person that's anxious and depressed, they're ashamed, believe they are worth nothing. And so by first telling them that I value them, that I value you as a person, I respect you as a person, and you, you know, tell them anything and everything that I can think of that's good about them. But then tie it back to the fact that the classes, the grades, these aren't the problem. You know, that's treating a symptom, a symptom that is a result of the depression. It's not what's causing it, you know? So giving them life advice, talking about what they should do, what they could do. These are the things that people try to do, and they have good intentions, absolutely. Like, let's not take away that people are trying to help. But it doesn't help. This is what it is, it doesn't help. What I need somebody, what I needed from somebody back then, is to ask me why I was so anxious. What am I so worried about, you know? Say, like, what happens if you go to class? And then I'll say, well, I might be embarrassed that people see me. They haven't seen me in a while. Well, what happens if you're embarrassed? Like, what does that lead to? And you can go on this rabbit hole. Because the reason why anxiety runs so deep and becomes such a problem is because of that point we talked about earlier where the prob the stressor itself creates so much anxiety within you that you don't even want to look at it. You cease to have any sort of solution-oriented thinking, and you don't even give yourself credit that that's a reasonable thought, but you should look to have healthier ones. You feel bad that you're even having the thought, and then you don't even think about the thought. Then you're having the thought without consciously having it. You're just experiencing the dread and the worriedness um, that is accompanied with the thought. And so anxiety is something that I needed somebody to allow me to call myself out and say, like, these are the things I'm thinking about. And when you say it out loud, even like, as I look back at my own concerns, they were stupid. Like when I say they're stupid, it's like, well, if I don't go to class, then I fail. Like, that's what's stupid about it, right? I'm obviously just going to fail and then I'm fucked. The concerns are reasonable, but the thoughts themselves like, you realize the absurdity. Stoop is the wrong word. I'd say they're absurd. Like, the absurdity of these thoughts are real. And I feel like we're so taught so often in life that you shouldn't have that problem. That shouldn't be something you're concerned about. Why do you care so much about that? And these are things, these are emotions that we cannot control. We can simply understand them, simply be aware that we have them and figure out something to do about them when we experience them. So this isn't me. I mean, it is technically me giving advice, but this is really the one of the last things I want to say for this video is that if somebody around you is depressed, if somebody around you seems anxious, I highly encourage you to make that difference in their life. Be the person that will not judge them. Go into the conversation knowing you will not judge them. You will not you know, discount any of their problems. You will not write them off. And then you will be curious. One of my favorite buzz buzzwords recently is curiosity. Uh, a lot of times, myself in the past, when I saw something that I didn't understand, you have like a negative reaction to it. You're like, why are you having all these problems? Why does this suck? 
you know, or like, this just sucks. Like these problems shouldn't matter. And the, the why aspect is actually the curiosity aspect. So the why is just wrong. It's like, these things suck. Like you shouldn't feel that way. These are negative reactions. They're almost offensive. But the curiosity component comes in with asking, why does that worry you so much? Why won't you go to class? Because people just want to feel heard. They want you to acknowledge that the problem they have is real, even if you don't understand it. So until you understand their problem, no matter how long it takes, just keep asking. Keep asking questions. Keep asking them, because, and that shows that you care, you're listening. That shows that you want to help them, even if you don't know how. A lot of times, what I've come to the terms with is that if I can't help anybody, if I don't know how to help somebody, if I don't know the solution to the problem, one of the worst things I can do is act like I do or give advice as if I do understand. And if you ask them a hundred questions and you still don't know how to help them, I promise you that you already have. I promise you that that is something that they had to hear, something they needed somebody to do for them. Simply out of the fact that that's what I needed. And I've heard of similar stories coming from some of my friends. So my final message for this video is that back then I felt alone. I felt like my problems were not real, that I shouldn't be feeling them and that nobody would understand. And I just want to let you guys know out there that you can be potentially that person that understands if one of your friends is suffering or a loved one. And if you're the one that's suffering right now, at the very least, I understand and that there is somebody out there that will understand and that you are not alone and your emotions are things that you cannot control that you have them you can only control what you do with them so don't forget that that shame you feel about having that emotion is not fair to you because there's nothing you can do about it but what you do with that emotion is something you can take pride in and talk to people about. Everybody's problems are different, but everybody's got them. So if there's one thing I could really say to myself back then is don't feel bad for the problems that you have. Don't feel like it's your fault that you have them. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, I hope this... If you've made it this far, that this video, if even just one of you had helped or gave you something to think about, that would be all I need from it. See you guys.